Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for showing up to Charles Roots thesis defense. All right. Quick and dirty. He's from Ocala, Florida, which is in Florida. Just outside of Ocala. He went to Charles went to the University of Florida where he got his undergrad in geography and a concentration in journalism. Is that right? Okay. I met Charles in 2010. Actually, he had talked to Mike about coming here, and I met him at the American Meteorological Society conference, and we talked there, and it was in Atlanta, which is where it's going to be in January, so that'll be four years. He started here fall 2010, and his first sentence to me was, looking forward to working with you, but I want to take three years. So I was like, fine. <laughs> we can do that. So he's done a good job. He's kept on top of everything. He's got a lot of interest, a lot of foci, and he's taken care of most of those, but Today he's going to talk about his thesis. He said, I want to do severe weather, I like tornadoes, and I like hurricanes. I was like, great, do them both. <laughs> so there you go. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Dyer. Thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, basically doing the thesis on a geographic analysis uh, for tornadoes from nearby tropical cyclones in the state of Florida, seeing if there are any patterns that persist with that. So let me give a little bit of background first. We know that TC's tropical cyclones can spawn out extensive wind damage coastal flooding, inland flooding, but they also can produce tornadoes at or after landfall, or even before landfall. So I'll give you a little bit of background on the previous research. Uh, a lot of the TC tornadoes occur on the right front quadrant of center of circulation, with a lot of them having to form in the inner, outer, and some of the convective cells uh, from the center. And they usually occur about two to 400 kilometers from the center of circulation. So our dynamics, one of the very first papers written on this was Malcolm Galway from 1953, which looked at Hurricane Abel a year beforehand, which spawned three tornadoes in Virginia. Uh, their paper found out that Abel lacked low-level temperature inversion, steep moisture gradient, and ex excessive instability. So it was very atypical what you usually see, say, compared to in the Midwest. Uh, convective available potential energy was also the highest to the right of the tropical cyclone. Dew point depressions, the difference between the temperature and the dew point aloft, were usually less than 6 degrees Celsius. However, 15 or 13 years later, Curtis found out that with the majority of tornado outbreak cases, they had a lot of dry air intrusion uh, and pronounced relative humidity gradient, and also greater dew point depression, sometimes as much as 10 degrees Celsius. The kinematics, the movement of the air, vertical wind shear and helicity were determined to be the highest from the right front quadrant of a tropical cyclone. Tornadoes do form far enough inland to where low levels can be slowed by friction. In other words, imagine these uh, vectors here, longer the line, faster the wind. What happens usually is the winds at the surface hit the land, get slowed by friction, usually have greater horizontal rolls, horizontal vorticity taking place, while the winds aloft stay relatively the same. The timing? Usually most frequent when TCs initially cross land and other rapid filling. In other words, when dry air starts to intrude the tropical cyclone is when these usually tend to occur. There's also a strong diurnal signal in the outer region of the TC with the highest signal in the afternoon. So a lot of these in the outer bands occur in the afternoon hours, while the inner region usually occurs within 12 hours of landfall. So, why pick Florida? Why this state? Very little research has been done on TC tornadoes as a whole for the state. There have been some research done on individual storms, like Ivan, and, um, or just a broad scale throughout the southeast or entire U.S. Uh, mainland. Uh, Florida has a unique land surface pattern geography, a relatively flat terrain, and a 1,300-mile coastline. Very, very dense population in a lot of areas, especially around the coast in some places. And the tourism-based economy could also have economic impacts in this added feature from tropical cyclones. So we want to know, are there any patterns with tornado touchdowns from lifelong tropical cyclones or nearby tropical cyclones in Florida? We want to know if there are any patterns with the time of occurrence relative to landfall, any patterns of the proximity, the center of circulation, or relative direction, say bearing and distance. Are there any, are there any high density areas in the state? Are there any patterns of elevation, population, land use? If any patterns are discovered, what could they mean? And can a forecasting technique be determined 
based on these results. So first, we collected the data, confirmed, confirmed tornado reports between 1915 and 2011, including the location of touchdown, geographic coordinates, date, time, distance, travel, media, operating, etc. Uh, also, for the same time period, collected the HERDAT data, uh, six hour intervals uh, between the same time period. Data were reduced to tornado reports that occurred between the TC time impact and the, where, the, where the TC was no longer tracked. TC tracks were then extrapolated from six hours to one hour, and then search for tornadoes that occur within 800 kilometers from the center of circulation based on the call paper from 1991. And the distance and bearing were calculated uh, from the TC center of circulation using Euclidean distance. TC reports from the AAC were also gathered so that landfall times could be determined so we can find a relationship with tornadoes occurring uh, before and after landfall. Although some TCs did have multiple landfalls. To give you an example, Tropical Storm Stay in 2008 had four landfalls in the state of Florida. So it made things a little tricky to figure out, okay, we had these TCs happen, now, or, these, or these tornadoes happen relative to which TC landfall. And then the TC tornado research scope was reduced to a 15 year period. Why? The paper was discovered where Aggie Hendricks found that there was a bias in the tornado reports between pre-Doppler and post-Doppler era. In the end, 248 reported tornadoes across the state for this time period based on tropical cyclone. So, methodology. Analysis consists of three main pillars. We have a temporal, the spatial relationship, distance of bearing from the center, and relationship with geographic features, such as current density analysis performed, elevation, land use, and population. First, I want to throw this out there. Imagine putting a hurricane over the center of the U.S., the Great Plains, flat land, so no large water body, first off. And there's no immediate sources of moisture attraction coming into the center of circulation. Flat land. Uh, overall, except for a few metro areas, it's either it's really flat, but also you have either open grass fields or even agriculture. So not much land use, the differences in land use. It's just land, simple as that, for the most part. Here's the reality for Florida. You do have multiple directions of landfall. East, west, could cross the state again, hit the other direction. You have different land use types. You have urban, you have a lot of forest, you have a lot of swamps, so forth. You do have relatively, it's a relatively flat land with some hills, especially in central Florida as you go up to the panhandle as well. High population zones, mostly along the coast, but some parts inland as well. You have two coastlines, two water bodies surrounding the state. You have lakes, intercoastal waters, islands, angle of the coastline. It's not directly north-south, it's more north-northwest to uh, south-southeast. It's chaos, let's put it that way. So keep this in mind, there are probably other effects on the mesoscale or micro scale that could affect uh, TC tornadoes, except for that. So time of occurrence between landfall and TC tornadoes were calculated. We had a negative time of before, and a positive time it's after. So we have a total of 108 western uh, landfalling tornadoes, where east we had 60. So that's three times more in the west than the east. So there's going to be some... Uh, uh, a lot of heavy weighing on the western landfall for all of them. And here's a plot for tornado occurrences for all of them. So negative time, that's before. This is at and this is after. Usually we see a very steady increase in TC tornado activity right before landfall with a max happening four hours before to at landfall. And then a steady decrease after landfall. In fact, the 75th percentile is just two hours after landfall will be in the six hours. Now the west, again, it's heavily, the previous data is all was heavily weighed for the west, but you do see a steady increase in occurrences right till at landfall, and afterwards a quick drop off maybe 10 hours after landfall. East, it's a little more chaotic. Start to see a lot of events bouncing back and forth before landfall, then we have a high frequency peak again, 
at, at around landfall, four hours before to zero hour, and then a slower drop off of events. In fact, 30 hours before landfall, you see the 25th percent uh, quartile and the 75th at 14 hours. Quick uh, whisker in the box. You do see a wide temporal distribution here for east and storms. This is your zero hour. For our west, a lot of them are before landfall. 53% of all TC tornadoes actually occur roughly within 24 hours before landfall. So this kind of goes against the previous research from Alvin Gray, which suggests a lot of this matter after landfall. Western landfall, reason why before, best shear occurs before landfall. You have decent thunderstorm development ahead of the storm, therefore you have an opportunity to develop tornadoes. Af now for west or eastern storms, possible causes as the TC begins to cross the state. The state is more under the influences of the eastern side of the storm. So you have the best moisture affection, and you break some of the cloud cover could develop really strong thunderstorms with enough updraft to produce tornadoes. And the best year is there as well. <coughs> now for storm centric. Distance and barracks in the tropical cyclone was calculated, or from the, between the tornado and tropical cyclone. All tornadoes, look into that. And it's broken down to four sections Western before. Western at or after, Eastern before, and Eastern at or after. And I broke it down a little more so you guys use the, use the counts. A lot of Western incidents compared to at or after. I've seen a lot of before Western incidents compared to at or after. Whereas East before, at or after, we have a little bit more than before landfall. So, what you'll see here is a Frequency plot based on cardinal direction in increments of 45 degrees. So 0 to 45, 45 to 90, so forth. Whereas this is the frequency of TC tornadoes relative to the distance of the center of circulation in 100 kilometer increments. So mean direction is actually about 62 degrees. So a lot of occurrences for all of them seem to be happening in the east northeast subquadrant of the center of circulation. You do have some in the north northeast and the east southeast. Uh, other locations, but for the most part, the dominant on that side. Circular variance, basically what that means in short is, imagine circular <coughs> variance being at zero is fairly clustered, one being fairly dispersed. Now you can only compare these to what you have in your data sets, not normalized. So I'll give you a heads up, this is pretty low compared to the other data. Um, so it's fairly clustered, likely around the 63 mean, but the average distance from the center of circulation at 331 kilometers, where a lot of these occur higher, higher frequencies between 100 and 500 kilometers from the center of circulation, which is what, kind of along the lines of the research that was given out before, where they said two to 400 kilometers to the center. Now, for Western before landfall, dominant east northeast with a mean direction of 65. Circular variance about the same, so fairly clustered, respectively. Almost a normal esque distribution here, uh, with a lot of these happening about three to four hundred kilometers from the center of circulation, with the average distance of 356 kilometers. West at or after things get a little interesting. We have a multimodal distribution where we have tornadoes occurring on the north northeast and east southeast from the center of circulation. So this mean direction is not valid. Circular variance, 0.42. This is probably one of the widest distributed, so very, very great variance with this compared to, say, Western uh, before landfall. The average distance actually decreases a little bit to 274 kilometers from the center of circulation with uh, our peak at about 1 to 200 kilometers from the center. Likely reasoning for this is that as after the storm makes landfall, you still have some development, tornado is on the, on the northern fringes of it, but as the storm moves away, you may start to begin to see storm, uh, th uh, tornadoes develop on the eastern side, again with the best shear, um, so forth. Now the eastern side. This looks this is fairly interesting because the mean direction is actually 344 degrees, north northwest uh, for eastern landfall. One thing I did notice is this kind of 
almost mimics the eastern coast of Florida. If you look at a map, the, the, the orientation of the coastline is north, northwest, and south, southeast. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, finding where most of the events occur. Uh, you do have some on the east, uh, northeast, and maybe three or so on the west, southwest. But overall, circular variance is between, kind of in the middle between the two uh, maxes and men. So a blend of uh, one of the distributed and not so. Uh, the average distance is about 317 kilometers from the center of circulation, with our peak of events usually happening about two to 300 from the center. At or after landfall for eastern landfall in DC, it shifts back to the east southeast, where we do see the higher frequencies there. You do have some of the north northeast sub quadrant and some of the southern portions of the storm. Likely, as the storm crosses through the state of Florida, you start to experience more of the French, the uh, eastern side of the center of circulation. Therefore, again, you have the best shear, best thunderstorm development on that side. Circular variance is definitely. The highest number, we do have greater variance, 0.492 is the highest of the whole data set. Average distance about 337 kilometers from the center, so a little bit further away from the center, just slightly, than before landfall. So a lot of the events kind of spiking uh, between 100 and over 500 kilometers from the center. Now, the geographic analysis. We want to do a density analysis, but we need to know what search radius to use. What, what uh, search radius to use. So use Moran's eye. Moran's eye is basically a spatial statistical method of determining spatial odd correlation between two points. So we want to use that to test uh, TC tornadoes, western and eastern landfalling events. The test radius with the highest C score was the uh, distance used for the search radius for the kernel density analysis. Give you an example. This is for all TC tornadoes. Uh, pretty much re-ran this over and over and over again until I was absolutely certain I had the highest C score. Sure enough, 9.52, search radius is 70 kilometers for all. And here's that plot. Do have hot, do have a high density uh, of events around uh, a little bit to the east of Pensacola. So in the Panhandle, West Central Florida, Southeast Florida, and the Northeast Florida. But I'm going to break these down to explain just a little bit more, starting with Eastern Landfall. We have two hot spots. We have some, or a lot really, on uh, Northeast Florida, south of Jacksonville, kind of around St. Augustine, Flagler Beach. You do have some in urbanized Southeast Florida, with a uh, corridor here, uh, Pasco, Hernando counties, back east to near Melbourne. But it turns out 55% of all these events here came from two landfalling tropical cyclones, Hurricanes Francis and Jean, which made landfall roughly the same location three weeks apart. So a lot of this data is heavily weighed to that, those, those two events. So we only have 60 uh, landfalling tornadoes, or tornadoes from eastern landfalling tropical cyclones. Likely again, kind of take you back to the, um, the uh, storm-centric analysis. The shear on the northern portion of TC, strong rain bands, etc., are likely the causes of this as the storms make landfall. You do have some of them in the distance from the center of circulation. Now for the western. There's some things I expected and some things I didn't. For instance, what I expected. Pensacola, hot spots. A little bit over here, east or west of Jacksonville, west central Florida. But we're also getting High clusters of events, high density events here south of St. Augustine around Flagler Beach, north of Daytona Beach, and even some in Broward. So, I was a little bit perplexed by that until I thought of this. In fact, I was in Dr. Dyer's office when it hit me in the head. Scenario Imagine this Western land falling tropical cyclone about to hit the, the peninsula. At the surface, you still have an southeasterly to easterly wind flow around the center of circulation. So, in this region, you still have high horizontal vorticity, uh, vorticity turning in the air, which, you have good thunderstorm development, it's also on the right front quadrant, and the northeast quadrant, you have the best thunderstorm development, you have the best shear, and then tornado development possible. Elevation. We pull a digital DEM model from the USGS, originally at 30 meters, but 
We sampled both the kernel density analysis for all and the DEMs of 15 kilometers. Why? Because the original data is too fine a resolution for geographic coordinate system. So in other words, you have a big dot with the coordinates with these little squares. So how do you know which uh, elevation that land on? So um, it was done for that reason and also to help kind of remove some of the possible noise in the data to be able to uh, disturb any pattern. So here's what the DEM looks like. Just for reference, you can see some of the hilly locations on Central and the pan and the Panhandle as well. Highest point is actually in Britain Hill, whopping 345 feet above sea level. Whereas the lowest point, well, it's Florida, sea level. This is what we have. Elevation, TC, tornado density, density, elevation, very weak R square, so very weak relationship between elevation and uh, tornado density. So, next is land use. Yeah, received the raster file containing land use types, 43 to be specific, from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, and 30 meter blocks. That's a lot. 43 is a lot. So what I decided to do to be able to determine patterns even, uh, better is to condense this into 10 groups based on shared characteristics. So I'll give you an example. There's high impact urban, low impact urban, just classify them as urban. You have coastal strand, sand beach, considered a coast, and so on and so on and so on. The, the data were then normalized percent of TC tourism and land use type over the percent of land use type in the state. And here's what we have. Now, you're probably noticing this big spike here where we have exotic plant life. And you're maybe thinking to yourself, wow, a lot of these are happening in exotic plant locations. There's a high signal for that. I wouldn't say that just yet because only 0.13% of land cover in the state is actually exotic. And when I went and inspected these locations, these exotics were actually around a lot of urban areas. So, which leads me to the next one, urban. Higher ratio, but we'll find out in a minute if there's really a pattern with the population and TC tornado events. Shrub, grassland. And then open water, maybe you wonder about open water. Open water, there were some developed, there were some tornadoes that actually developed near shore, not on land, and intercoastal, and rivers, lakes, so forth. So that's where that comes that's where that comes in. But besides that, I'm not really seeing any strong signals uh, saying, hey, these TC tornadoes are developing over these uh, certain specific types of land use. Now population. Pulled out the data from the Census Bureau for 2009, bit of county based. So you have all 67 counties here. You can see the high density population zones in Southeast Florida, Orlando, Tampa Bay, Jacksonville, and so forth. Now, these are per square kilometer. Now I'm going to pull up the population of the tornado density. So show me tornado density. Not much of a huge, not, not a whole lot are happening over high population zones. You do see some of them um, in the Panhandle, St. John's County, Flagler County, near St. Augustine, Flagler Beach. Uh, you do see some of the Space Coast a little bit near uh, Tampa Bay, Hillsboro, um, Monroe County, which actually covers the Keys as well. So, not a definitive um, mode of saying, hey, a lot of these are happening over populated areas. In fact, normalize the data, TC tornado data over pop density. High signals seem to be over not so high populated areas. In fact, Hardy, DeSoto County, it's no man's land. So, uh, Monroe County, that's the keys included. Some parts, Jefferson County out the panhandle. Uh, so, lowest over the large metro areas, where the highest over uh, the lower populated areas. And one last thing population density, is DC tornado density. Very weak relationship. So, my conclusions. These are likely storm-based influences rather than geographic features, at least land use, population, and elevation. The relationships are just too weak to be geographic for those three. And it's dependent on the path of landfall. And on the path of the storm and the landfall. 
So, say you work for the National Weather Service. You need to talk to your forecasters about what to look for. Um, what do you need to write on your hurricane local statements? If you're TV met, what do you tell the public? What do you look out for? For eastern landfalling TCs, keep an eye on the northern portions of the center, from the center of circulation and the eastern after landfall. The average TC tornado distance increases slightly farther from the center of circulation after landfall. And there's a wider temporal occurrence compared to western landfall. So, uh, northeastern quadrant dominant before landfall for the west and northeastern to east, southeast, southeastern, monitored after landfall. And the average TC tornado distance closer to TC center after landfall, so it's the inverse a little bit of the eastern. They will likely, more likely occur before landfall than after landfall. But regardless, forecasters should not burn themselves, they should be vigilant after landfall, as some do develop. A lot of caveats with this. Low sample size of data, relatively low temporal span of data, only have 15 years. There are limited toward the amount of tornadoes per TC, so doing any storm-specific analysis wouldn't do very well. There are multiple landfalls with TCC, so a little bit of subjectivity to determining uh, what landfall to consider was related with each TC occurrence. Varying orientations of landfall, unique geography, as I explained earlier and highly dependent on hurricane season output. Future research should consider maybe investigating thermodynamic profiles of real-world indices with a relationship to the phenomenon. Modeling of the TC tornadoes in Florida and possibly revisit this after a few years, after more storms uh, <coughs> occur in the state. I would like to thank Dr. Dyer for being a committee head and uh, being a big help and uh, being patient with me throughout this, and I, I appreciate it. Um, Dr. Mercer and Dr. Cook for being on the committee as well and being a help. Uh, Kate Rolla, I've had to go to her office a few times to get some GIS help, and it, it was it was great. I'm grateful for that. Damaris, my girlfriend, for uh, helping me out, sticking with me, and helping you with prep the presentation preparation. So, appreciate that. My friends, family, and classmates, thank you all for being there and uh, supportive throughout this uh, endeavor. So, any questions? <laughs>